Have you ever wanted to use AutoCAD geometry in Inventor? In this video, I'll show you three ways that you can use that AutoCAD geometry in Inventor and talk about the advantages and disadvantages of each. The first way of getting your AutoCAD geometry from AutoCAD into Inventor is actually quite simple. It's just a simple copy and paste. So here in AutoCAD, I'm going to make a window around the geometry that I want to use. I will do Control C to copy that to the clipboard. Then when I move to Auto or to Inventor, I'm going to start a new sketch, and then I can simply Control V and paste this information into Inventor. Now the good thing about this is it does bring in all of the geometry, and even the dimensions that it puts in here are normal Inventor dimensions. So if I look at this, it's a, you know it's an, a dimension in this case it's D1, and I could come in here and I could change that number and get this thing to update. The disadvantage of using this method is you can see that there are no constraints applied to this whatsoever. So if I come in here and choose Show All Constraints, you'll see that there are no constraints on this geometry. And so if I come in here, for example, I can just pick this, and if I pick any one of these, it'll just move them around. But if I pick that one now I've got conditions here that I did not necessarily want to have happen so if you just want to put the geometry in and then come back in and reconstrain it that's fine it works but it does create a little bit of work on your part the second way to get that AutoCAD geometry from AutoCAD into Inventor is to import the sketch so in this second method here, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to say, actually, I'll, I'll insert the sketch here. Um, I'm going to start a new sketch. I'm going to pick the sketch plane that I want. And then now on the insert tab, I'm on the, notice I'm on the sketch tab here on the sketch panel or insert panel, there is an ACAD tool. Okay, now if I want to use this ACAD tool, the first thing I have to remember is, or I have to know is, this sketch cannot be open in AutoCAD. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this sketch real quick. I'm not gonna save any changes to it. Uh, and now when I come over here, I can click on here and I can pick the sketch that I want, choose open, and it will uh, take a second here to analyze the sketch and, and think about the geometry. Then what it's gonna do next is it's going to come up with a screen that shows me all of the layers in that drawing. Now I did this once before <clears throat> I started the video so I've already come through and unchecked these. When you do it for the first time what will happen is all of these layers will be checked and it will want to come in and import all of those layers. And you'll notice down here in this selection it says all so it's going to import all of them. Now what I can do is, is I can come in and I can uncheck layers that I don't necessarily want to import. So if I don't want to import, you know, some of these other things like the legend and the no plot layer and those kinds of things, I can come through and I can turn those off. I can also, if I don't want center lines in this, I can turn those off. Hidden lines, of course, section lines, def points. The one thing to be aware of is if you use this import tool or this insert tool and you bring dimensions in um, it it'll bring them in but then your drawing won't behave the way you want and sometimes it won't it will fail you won't be able to do any extrude or anything so i suggest that you leave those dimensions off the other thing you can do is if you uncheck this box right here you can come in and you can select the things that you want to import and it, notice how it'll highlight them and it even tells you how many you have highlighted down here. If I check them all, it just goes back to all and it's going to select all of those. And I'll choose next. Uh, then when you get to this screen, you want to make sure that you have, you know, your detected units as inches or whatever is available in your drawing. And you also want to check these two boxes right here. So you want to constrain the endpoints to each other and you want to apply those geometric constraints. So when I choose finish in this one, <clears throat> It's going to ask me where I want to, or it doesn't ask me where I want to put it. it. It puts it in automatically. And the advantage of this one is you can see if I come in here and choose show constraints, it puts in all of the constraints for me. But the disadvantage is now I don't have any dimensions. So I have to go back in and dimension this again. 
So advantages, disadvantages, those are the two for this one. The third method <clears throat> is to go through and import the drawing before you even create a sketch. <clears throat> so I'm not going to create a sketch here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the import tool. So I'll go to manage here and <clears throat> I'm going to go to import right here on the insert panel. And then it asks me what I want to import. I'm going to import that same drawing again there. Choose open. It asks me where I want to put it. So I'll pick the plane that I want it to go to. And then it's going to ask me where I want it to go in the drawing itself or in that sketch. So I'm going to pick the origin, the start point there. Now, in this case, this is coming up with a, a screen. It's saying, hey, you know, the, the drawing that you're importing is not in the active project. I know that's OK. I'm going to choose OK there. And then the second thing that's going to ask me here is, uh, well, it's telling me that I when I insert this drawing, um, it is um, associated with the DWG. And I'm going to choose OK with that. So now the fact that it's associated with the DWG means that if I make a change in the DWG file, it will give me the option to update this part file. It doesn't go back the other way. If I make a change to the part file, it doesn't update the DWG. But for your user who has AutoCAD and is maybe stretching, making parts, that kind of stuff, it allows him to make that or her to make to make those changes. And then those changes will be reflected here. Now, in order to get this complete, um, you'll want to go through and you'll want to create a sketch out of this. Notice that this here is not really a sketch. If I go to 3D model and choose extrude, it's asking me to create a sketch because it doesn't see one. So I'm going to say, let's create a new sketch. <clears throat> and I'm going to go ahead and put that on that front plane there. And then what I want to do is I want to, ex uh, I want to project all of this geometry to that sketch plane. So I'll come up here to project geometry and notice that it has this option at the bottom that says project D G D DWG geometry. And so then I can come in and I can pick those things that I want to project to the sketch plane. <clears throat> Everything is already fully constrained. Okay, so I don't notice I don't have to actually constrain anything. I can say finish this sketch. And then if I wanted to, oh, let me go back in and modify this. I'm going to also project <clears throat> that slot in here. So we'll say, OK, that's good. Um, finish this 2D sketch. And of course, now I can extrude this and you know get this to look like whatever I want. Now, of course, the, uh, the associativity comes back in with AutoCAD. So if I come back in and open this drawing, and I'll say, OK, let's stretch this again. I'm going to make it just maybe an inch and a half shorter so that now it's a little bit shorter, something that we can actually see. I will save this drawing. Going back to Inventor, it hasn't updated here, but notice over here in the history on the plate, there's a little exclamation point, the, the lightning bolt here saying, hey, there is a change that can be made. So if I come in here and update that, it will update here. So it's associative, associative from DWG to Inventor. And now, of course, because that sketch is not a part of the drawing, all I need to do is come in here and turn that visibility off so that it's good to go. So three different ways, advantages and disadvantages for each. Uh, I hope that this helps and it helps you to work with Inventor uh, a lot more efficiently. Thanks for watching.